Winning a Nobel Prize for science is like winning an Olympic gold medal. Those who win it become forever enshrined among the scientific greats. But winning a Nobel Prize does not make the winner infallible. Some winners have missed the mark, and others have openly embraced pseudoscientific views. These are the five times when Nobel Prize winning scientists got it wrong and refused to admit it. Number five, Ernest Rutherford and nuclear power. Rutherford won the Nobel Prize for his work on radioactivity and became even more famous when his gold foil experiment proved the existence of the atomic nucleus. He is widely considered to be the father of nuclear physics. Ironically, he was also one of the most prominent skeptics of nuclear energy, claiming that there is no appreciable energy available to man through atomic disintegration, and anybody who looked for a source of power in the transformation of the atoms was talking moonshine. He was not the only prominent Nobel laureate to voice such skepticism. Robert Millikan, Niels Bohr, and even Albert Einstein all echoed those sentiments. However, Einstein would later reverse his position and pen an urgent letter to Franklin Roosevelt imploring him to authorize funding for the Manhattan Project. Rutherford died in 1937 before the Manhattan Project began and never got a chance to change his views, an ironic twist for the man whose research paved the way for the atomic bomb and nuclear power. Number four. Linus Pauling and Quasi-Crystals In 1987, Israeli metallurgist Dan Schechtman made a discovery that would upend conventional thinking about crystal structure. While investigating the properties of an aluminum-manganese alloy, Schechtman saw something very odd, a diffraction pattern indicating that the alloy had tenfold symmetry, something that is physically impossible for crystals to have. Schechtman proposed that the alloy had a quasi-crystal arrangement. On a short-range scale, there was no unit cell, no fundamental block of atoms that would repeat. But on a long-range scale, a pattern would emerge. According to Linus Pauling, who won the Nobel Peace Prize in addition to the Nobel Prize for Chemistry, the idea of quasi-crystals was scientific blasphemy. blasphemy! Linus Pauling would launch a one-man crusade against quasi-crystals, offering alternative explanations and constructing complicated models in an attempt to explain away Schechtman's unusual diffraction patterns. Pauling would deride Schechtman by saying that there were no such things as quasi-crystals, only quasi-scientists. Pauling never relented and died believing that quasi-crystals were a fiction. Schechtman would eventually receive ultimate vindication in the form of a Nobel Prize of his own for the discovery of quasi-crystals. While Rutherford, Einstein, Pauling, and others can be forgiven for being a bit short-sighted, the remaining entries on this list are guilty of nothing less than the complete abandonment of science and reason after winning their Nobel Prize. Coming in at number three, James Watson for his many ridiculous statements. Watson shared the Nobel Prize with Francis Crick for the discovery of the structure of DNA and is notorious for blurting out nonsense at regular intervals. Sometimes it's relatively mild, like his claim that increased concentration of melanin in skin cells leads to increased sex drives, telling a jam-packed auditorium, that's why you have Latin lovers. You've never heard of an English lover, only an English patient. Other claims have been less amusing, like his numerous statements linking race to IQ levels, which would eventually lead to his resignation as director of the Cold Spring Harbor Laboratory. Watson also proved short-sighted when predicting future trends in molecular genetics research, claiming in an interview with Scientific American back in 2003 that over the next 10 years, the field will be pretty much played out. Actually, the last few years have been among the most exciting in the history of genetics, and the pace of discovery isn't slowing down in the least bit. The discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 alone has revolutionized gene editing and opened up new doors for gene therapy. When questioned about his reputation for being outspoken and going rogue, Watson replied, I just can't sit while people are saying nonsense in a meeting without saying it's nonsense. Unsurprisingly, James Watson never called out himself for his own nonsense. Number two, William Shockley and his support for eugenics. Shockley shared the Nobel Prize in 1956 for the discovery of the transistor and was a pioneer in the field of semiconductor research. Despite having no training in biology or genetics, Shockley spent the latter years of his life promoting eugenics, supporting proposals such as offering financial stipends to women with low IQs to undergo voluntary sterilization. Like James Watson, Shockley was convinced that race and intelligence were intrinsically linked, despite a total lack of any credible evidence to support this claim. His descent into pseudoscience has been one of the most egregious for a Nobel Prize winner in science, with the possible exception of number one, K. 
Carrie Mullis, and AIDS denialism. Carrie Mullis won the Nobel Prize in 1993 for the invention of PCR, a technique used to amplify segments of DNA. Afterwards, Mullis aligned himself with the AIDS denialist movement, which rejected the link between the HIV virus and AIDS. He was an unabashed supporter of Peter Duisberg, a Berkeley researcher who claimed that AIDS was caused by a combination of recreational drug use, the consumption of retroviral treatments such as AZT, and malnourishment in Sub-Saharan Africa. Mullis also promoted conspiracy theories that claimed the HIV research community was perpetuating a hoax in order for drug companies to continue selling AZT. He said that the HIV-AIDS hypothesis is one giant mistake, despite a preponderance of evidence unequivocally demonstrating that HIV infections left unchecked lead to AIDS. Mullis also predicted that eventually there is going to come a time when a percentage of the population is going to have AIDS and not have HIV. However, the exact opposite happened. Retroviral therapies which keep HIV infections to near undetectable levels have led to the near elimination of AIDS in most Western countries. Even after all of his claims had been thoroughly debunked and discredited, Mullis never retracted his statements. Whether due to an inability to see past established conventions, or by getting mired in pseudoscience, great minds are not immune from getting it wrong, even if they have a Nobel Prize. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay curious. Thank you.